In every industrial society, there are uh, elements and the percentage of the working class that actually get demoralized by the circumstances of their life. The term is lumpen. Lumpen proletarians is the term been given, lumpen working class people. I wouldn't put that percentage in Scotland or indeed in most countries higher than one or two percent. In Scotland, a strong section of that demoralized people uh, identify with Rangers and or Celtic. If Rangers and Celtic didn't exist, uh, something else would have to be invented that would uh, be an object around which these elements would uh, polarise. Nobody uh, speaking about Celtic and Rangers should avoid the question of religion. The Rangers football club is not actually a Protestant football club, it's an anti-Catholic football club. Celtic, for instance, uh, although it started as a, a Catholic uh, charitable organisation, was not particularly religious, it was, it was Irish. It was a, a national organisation rather than a religious organisation. And they have no uh, religious scruples. Uh, I mean, there are many Protestants have played for a Celtic football club, but never a Catholic ever played for Rangers. And strangely enough, uh, the, the, one of the worst games was always Glasgow Rangers and Glasgow Celtic. It's a small war, and they, they, from one end of the ground they snarl at the other end of the ground where they, they segregate and they snarl at each other. And uh, it certainly gives the background details of, of warring communities. I don't think there's any doubt that a lot of the bitterness between Catholic and Protestant here is that the Catholics were immigrants. The, the savagery, however, that surrounds the feelings of the fans of these clubs uh, is genuinely a historical myth. The, the Rangers tend to take their enthusiasm uh, not from Scotland, but from Northern Ireland and from the celebrated King Billy, King William of Orange, who defeated the forces of the Stuart dynasty at the Battle of the Boyne. Now, this is believed by Protestant bigots in Glasgow to have been the victory of the Protestant over the Catholic. It's rubbish. The Vatican was delighted at it. King Billy himself was known in Europe as a friend of the convents. In his travels, he, he lived in convents. He made great benefactions of money and uh, kindnesses to the convents. But this has been turned into a great Protestant-Catholic battle. It was not. It was the old squalid struggle for power and for a throne. On the field, there always is uh, uh, rivalry, keen razor edge rivalry based not on any resentment of one or the other but just because of the fact that these players have been schooled and brought up to to get victory and it's the, it's the, the meeting of the two goliaths and they've got to be uh, razor edged keen enthusiastic fire in their belly uh, to play in a game like that and to, to play uh, to the best of their ability they've got to show the real guts and there for playing and the sheer desire for winning. Here are the teams, Glasgow Rangers and Dark Shirts, playing on their own ground. John Thompson, Scottish international goalkeeper, is among the Celtic team who play in striped shirts.
the best of friends must part. No more we'll stand and cheer you on the slopes of Celtic Park. In Glasgow today, the battle is not between a team and a team. It's between the prods and the papes. And Rangers Football Club is dedicated to the cause of anti-popery, believing, like the bigots in Northern Ireland, that the Pope is the Antichrist, the Scarlet Woman of Rome. held in Glasgow's Roman Catholic Cathedral, St Andrews. The Lord Provost, Sir Donald Little, represented the city of Glasgow, and the congregation was made up of many denominations from all walks of life, including some relatives of the 66 who died in the disaster. Celtics manager Jock Steen was there with members of his team. So were players and officials from the Rangers Club. The service was conducted by the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Glasgow, James Scanlon. On Saturday, the Church of Scotland will be holding a memorial service in Glasgow Cathedral. Rangers manager, Willie Waddle, was in the congregation with the club chairman, Mr John Lawrence. Although the service inevitably was Roman Catholic in its form, it was a moving and impressive occasion when Glasgow's strong Protestant and Catholic communities remembered together a gathering of the two religious groups who normally tend to split in their traditional support of the two teams playing in Saturday's match of disaster. And they still call Irishmen and Catholics Fenians. The very word is 60 years out of date. Fenians, well, De Valera, who was a Protestant, was a Fenian. But we call, in Glasgow, we call Catholics Fenians. There is a story in this very powerful Protestant area of a man who went into a pub quite near here, near Ibrox Park, the home of Rangers leading a live alligator and said to the barman, do you serve Catholics in here? And the barman, looking at the alligator, decided to be discreet and said, oh yes sir, we serve anybody. He said, well, a pint for me and a Catholic for my friend. And that is the situation here and it still goes on in an age when we are flinging scrap iron at the moon. The govern Protestant is terrified that his life may be destroyed by a wee fella from Ireland. My gorge rises and my stomach quails at the sight of this idiot bigotry of the Rangers fan who will not tolerate a Tim, a Tim Malloy, a boy, a Catholic. That's really what's wrong with these greatest rivals in the world. are fighting a battle that was over long ago and even when it was there was not the battle they thought it was.
think to put it bluntly, without Celtic or Rangers, Scottish football would sink, sink to the level that it is in Northern Ireland, for instance, which is only part-time players playing for part-time clubs before part-time spectators. I think that Celtic and Rangers are really the image of Scottish football. We are the people who can draw the crowds to our games. We are the people who people want to come and see without Celtic or Rangers. There's lots of people think it would be a better league without them. But without the players of these two clubs, Scottish football would be nothing. Football is still a game. You may have your favourite team, whether it be Celtic, be it Rangers. But we like to think that whoever we play, we are a football team, nothing more. We are a football team who play anyone from anywhere, from any walk of life, from any religion, from any creed. That is Celtic football team. I hope the tradition never changes in this club. Uh, it's maybe an old-fashioned way of, of, of looking at things, but I think I'm a wee bit old-fashioned. Be quiet. I'll phone you back. Um, where was I?